Hello, I'm Dr. Tim Sandal, and I'm here with a short video to go through some of the new USP microbiology chapters that come into effect on the 1st of August 2022. And this is just to bring microbiologists, quality personnel, production personnel, engineers, etc., up to speed with some of these key changes that are um, taking place. So, USP Microbiology Updates 2022, and we've got about six or seven chapters to have a brief um, look at, so you can weigh up whether that's something that you need to delve deeper into through your USP subscription or however else you access the uh, USP. So the first chapter we're going to have a look at is relating to um, sterilization. And this is a general chapter looking at uh, general sterilization um, principles. And um, this chapter has been designed so it leads um, nicely into some of the other um, USP chapters that cover the um, sterilization topic. Um, so this chapter um, looks at some of the concepts and principles, the various modes of sterilization, and it's geared towards um, sterilization of compendial articles that must be sterile. And it particularly focuses on the sterilization processes that need to be monitored and controlled. It also includes good advice about the um, ensuring that the items to be sterilized are compatible and looking at the impact on things like container integrity about the packaging materials this could be wrappings or finished containers to make sure that their long-term stability isn't adversely affected um, also looks at the um, expected pre-sterilization by burdens and the importance of monitoring that to make sure that's um, not exceeding the validated um, assumptions in relation to bio burden and also there's uh, discussions around the key parameters that need to be monitored and selected for the validation and also for the routine monitoring to demonstrate that the sterilization processes and equipment can continue to um, operate within the prescribed parameters in routine operations and that's traceable back to the validated state and that we're still achieving the expected lethality um, and there's also um, information about control of bio burden which links to also to an update to a bio burden chapter which I'll have a look at in a minute and the emphasis there is that the key aspects there are to do with the total numbers of microorganisms but also the types of microorganisms that we might be expect to find as well. Um, the second chapter is USP 1117, which is all about best microbiology laboratory practices. And this is an existing chapter. It's undergone quite a detailed update. Lots of good content there for anyone who is responsible for managing a microbiology laboratory. But the two kind of standout things to me are Lots of additional advice about the control of culture media to do with transportation controls, about the um, growth promotion um, importance, and it touches upon the environmental isolate debate, or at least expanding the, the test panel, but saying that that's something that needs to be decided locally and can't be applied to um, compendial tests. Um, there's also uh, important advice about media used in aseptic processing areas and the guarantee that media is sterile and the necessity of doing um, a sterilization incubation step if the uh, media isn't going to be subject to a robust and reproducible sterilization cycle. And there's also um, a reference to um, endotoxin recovery from products and this leads to the low endotoxin recovery discussions to um, ensure that endotoxin uh, from a product can be recovered and it's still recoverable 
throughout the shelf life of that product so the point of testing is not in itself a variable. Um, there's also a chapter on um, the validation of alternative methods to um, look at antibiotic um, reactions through the antibiotic um, assay and this is an acknowledgement that things have moved on so chapter 1223.1 looks at the um, alternative methods to the more traditional methods that have been used to quantify the potency or antimicrobial activity of antibiotics and the new chapter provides um, points for consideration for pharmaceutical manufacturers who want to use um, physicochemical alternatives to the more traditional microbial assay methods. And one of those key methods that's um, examined is high performance liquid chromatography. And the chapter has a, a primary focus on HPLC methods, although the core principles can also be applied to other physicochemical um, procedures that need to be considered that might be more appropriate for uh, looking for antimicrobial effectiveness. There is also a chapter on viral, viral clearance, which is chapter 12, 29, 18. And this is a, a, a new chapter and it acknowledges the varied means for virus removal, so it could be things like nanofiltration, and for um, viral clearance or inactivation. So here we've got, as well as the filtration methods, chromatographic methods, um, thermal methods like heating activation, alterations of chemicals, so like solvent detergent combinations, and also radiation um, treatments or other chemical changes such as pH adjustments. So particularly for biotechnology, um, the viral clearance chapter is a, is a new one of interest. The chapter on biological indicators 1229.5 is also going undergoing an update. Um, so biological indicators are critical for assessing sterilization processes and they're using specific microorganisms in the end spore state that have a known resistance to a specific sterilization process. And there's some useful discussion here about the relationship between biological indicators and physical um, measurements. Um, and there's also emphasis upon what um, the pharmaceutical manufacturer needs to do in relation to the manufacturer of the biological indicator. So the bi biological indicator manufacturer should provide to the user information about the survival and kill times for biological indicators and that must be um, very clearly laid out in the documentation. And these are parameters that need to be verified by the end user. Um, so that's an important expectation there that, that's now detailed within the chapter. There's also USP 1229.2 which covers moist heat sterilization in, uh, and that fits nicely with um, the general sterilization chapter that I discussed. And this chapter here is about the sterilization of um, liquids principally the application of steam sterilization to suspensions and emulsions or whatever needs to be um, sterilized in the liquid aqueous state. So there's advice there in particularly in relation to the terminal sterilization of um, finished products and some warnings there about some of the things that um, can go wrong. So the time taken to heat the container, particularly a container wall, and the time then taken to impact the internal liquid inside. Some of the key parameters like steam quality, superheated water, and uh, the air quality as well. Um, and obviously the importance of the autoclave operation. 
So there's some interesting points in that chapter. Uh, we also have uh, USP 1229.3, which is all about buyer burden monitoring. And this is in relation to screening articles prior to sterilization. So here we have um, the buyer burden of liquids prior to filtration, and also the buyer burden of objects to go through sterilization, such as a pre autoclave buyer burden assessment, either on a surface or within a liquid if we're making a terminal sterilized um, product. So um, again, th this is quite a regulatory hot topic, so it's quite important that that chapter's afforded um, a lot of consideration. Okay, so this brings this video to an end. I've been Tim Sandal. Thank you for watching. The objective was to introduce the key USP chapters coming into effect on the 1st of August 2022. If anything here is important and catches your eye, please check out the chapter through the official USP route. And if you found this video interesting and you want to hear other Tim Sandal microbiology videos, then please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much and uh, good day.